right, gang, welcome back to Procreate. So in previous lessons, we talked about brushes, what they are, and where to find them. We covered the modification tabs just a little bit. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to split the modification of brushes into two distinct lessons because it gets a little long in the tooth if not. So the first one is going to show up here, and then there will be a version two later in the course when we start using some of those modifications. All right, so let's go ahead and pick a brush. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab an artistic. I'm going to grab the acrylic brush, and I'm going to left swipe, and I'm going to duplicate it. Now, the reason I did that, folks, I'm going to mess with it. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to rename it Test Brush 2. Now, later in the course, we're going to be actually building a lot of different types of brushes. We're going to be building lining brushes, stamp brushes, uh, symbol brushes. But right now, I just want to show you what the properties do. So let's go ahead and start with this stroke tab. Now, all brushes have a pattern which is composed of the shape and the grain. Increasing the spacing now isolates this. So this is an acrylic brush. I've got a red ink, I'm going to move it up to full, and I'm going to begin stamping. Okay. Now you see what's happening here. That's the acrylic brush. The spacing is all the way up. If I want it to be more flowy, I turn the spacing back down to zero. And now it's a flowy type of acrylic brush. Okay, so that's what spacing does. Let's go ahead and clear my layer here. I'm going to keep using the red color to kind of show you what's up. So now, streamline. This is the liner's friend, folks. Let me show you this. So if I was to go through and pull a line with this brush, it would show every wobbly imperfection that I had. Now, if you crank the streamline all the way up, Watch what happens. It takes all of the wobble out of the stroke. Now you see the stroke before right here, and you see the stroke after right here. That's the power of streamline. If you are doing lining work, you want that streamline all the way up. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the brush. Let's take a look at something else. Now jitter. I'm turning the streamline down. Jitter takes it, and you'll see that it's going to split it out and maybe move all those particles in a whole lot of different ways. So let's see what that does. Now, you're familiar with what it is when it's down. Now that it's all the way up, look at what's happening with this. Now, I know you're going, why would anybody want that? But if you've got a spray paint type of brush or you crank down the size, it actually gives kind of a really cool effect. So jitter is about taking it off that center line and making it kind of random. So if we turn the jitter back down, look at the difference in the brush. Again, the same techniques and the same sorts of adjustments can be used for a lot of different brush types. If you're doing spray paint brushes, jitter is for you. All right, now let's go ahead and clear this off. Let's take a look at the fall off. Now, fall off is an interesting one. Fall off, you see how it gets a lot more clear? Like this is a very opaque stroke. And now you see how this gets very transparent and eventually down to nothing? Fall off is the distance where, well, let's grab one. We're going to go ahead and turn this up a little bit. So this is a normal stroke, right? You'll notice at the beginning and at the end, there's no loss of paint. However, now let's turn the fall up off to about half, okay? Now we're going to start in the same spot. Watch what happens. I'm out of paint. I'm not removing my stylus. This is all the paint that it gives me. Fall off is almost like it runs out to almost nothing. So if I turn this down further, I should get a longer stroke. And that's where the fall off happens, right about there. So fall off, folks replicates the idea that you might dip your brush in paint, but eventually it's going to run out. Fall off has a lot of applications when you're doing a more painterly type of application, because sometimes the shorter strokes you want, 
you want them to kind of terminate into nothing. Like if you're going through and you're doing and you're building up. It's like that. All right. So let's go ahead and clear that. All right. So now let's go ahead and turn the fall off back down. Stroke taper is key. Now stroke taper is going to change how this thing tapers. Now you see the turning it up really didn't matter. But now let's turn up brush size and now turn up stroke taper. You see what happens there? Stroke taper is largely dependent on how much size variance you give it. So size variance is nothing. Stroke taper won't matter one bit. So let's crank the size up. Let's crank the taper up and I want to show you how the stroke differs. You see that this portion right there of the stroke, that's the stroke taper. So if you wanted to get this long flowy area, stroke taper is where it's at. Now, the end of the taper is largely dependent on your pressure. You're never going to get one where the taper here is equal to the taper here. It just doesn't work that way in Procreate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that size back down. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity back down. And now with the opacity down, you see how it's starting off very transparent and then it becomes highly opaque. Let's go ahead and clear that out. So I'm starting a stroke with the opacity all the way down. And it goes from very transparent to very opaque. Let's turn the opacity all the way up. Now we are opaque right from the first of the stroke to the last of the stroke. So it depends on how you want your stroke to really take up off the gate. All right, so each brush has different settings. So I just want to show you here, let's go to a lining brush. I think this is a good time to talk about this. Let's grab the studio pen. Notice my streamline is all the way up. Spacing is all the way down. And then you can adjust the stroke taper depending on what you want to do for the beginning and the end of the stroke. So if I was to do this, you see how streamline undoes all these jitters? So go ahead and take your streamline, turn it all the way down and try to pull that stroke. You see all of the imperfections in that line, folks. Streamline is your friend. All right, so streamline sorts all that out for you. All right, now other common areas. Let's take a look at like the airbrushing, soft airbrush. Spacing is right about here. So there's a little bit of spread. That's what gives the airbrush its effect. And there's no size variance and there's no streamline on that. Because what you want on that soft airbrush is you want it to actually perform in that way, a little spread out, a little softer. All right, so that's the first of the different adjustment menus for brushes. We're going to be looking at some of the different menus as we go through the course. And then when we get to the brush lessons here, we're going to go through and we're going to cover all five of these when we start creating. So you'll get to know them. You know now where to find them. But to really get to master them, you're going to learn them in depth when we begin to build the different brushes. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next lessons. Let's go ahead and get on to some of the more technical stuff so we can get on to some of the projects.